Hey guys, today we're making this cool text cue. It may look familiar if you saw Extra Creamy's Hush video. I saw this thing and I really thought it was cool and I wanted to remake it. So there's a few things here. First of all, it looks like a beveled cube. I spent some time in Fusion trying to make a nice looking cube. I tried using a Bender 3D to try and bend a plane. I tried using some displacement maps, which is a whole nother tutorial on its own. Turns out there is a way that you can make a beveled cube in DaVinci Resolve using custom vertexes, but it's a lot of math and it doesn't look that great. So we're going to be making our cube in Blender. Good news is, this is the easiest Blender tutorial you will ever watch. Go ahead and open up Blender. Normally we'd delete the default cube, but whoa, today's his lucky day. We actually need him. Go ahead and click on the cube. Go ahead and click on this modifiers tab. We're going to add in a bevel modifier. Go ahead and crank up the segments to five or six until it get a nice smooth edge. Now hit the tab key on your keyboard or go ahead and change the mode to edit. Now that we're in edit mode, we can go ahead and hit three on the keyboard or click this icon here. Go ahead and select one of the faces and select the face opposite to it. Go to the materials tab, add a new material, rename it if you wish, and go ahead and change the color and assign it. Now if you can't see the material, go up to this tab here and click on this icon. Go ahead and do that for the other four sides. Now you just have to go up to file, go to export, and export your FBX scene. And we're done. All right, go to Fusion, drag in a new Fusion Comp, right click it and change it to 10 seconds. Six is the max we actually need, but we'll just go to 10. You can always shorten it later. Go up to Fusion, import, FBX scene. You're gonna get a notification, it'll tell you all the things that's gonna import. Just go ahead and click okay. We can get rid of a few things. We can get rid of the camera and the light. Not gonna need those, we're gonna add our in our own. Bring your cube up to the viewer. You might notice it's pretty big. We're gonna, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna add in a transform to resize this. Make it 0 0.001. Now to actually get this in focus, I'm gonna add in a camera 3D, plug that in, and then you can back it off to 15. Then go back to your transform and just change the size to 0 0.01. All right, now it's sized correctly. I'm gonna add in a text. We can put in something like text, doesn't really matter. Then we can go to the transform tab. We're going to offset it by one. Then we're going to give it some depth, go down to extrusion, put in 0 0.05. Then make sure you click on the centered B anchor to center the text. Now, if I look at this in the viewer, I can see that I have some depth to my text and there's a couple things I want to change. I'm going to go over to the shading tab and I'm going to uncheck use one material. Now I can go down to the extrusion color and I can change the color of the sides of the text. Now, if you do happen to have a reference on hand, you can go ahead and change the colors by using the color picker and you can just grab the colors right off your reference. So just click on your material, go to the color picker, and you can just grab whatever color you want. Of course, if your colors change, you can rename the nodes as well. And of course, you can use this to change the color of the text. So go ahead and duplicate the text a few times. We're going to reset the parameters. You're going to offset it by one in a different direction, and you're probably going to have to rotate it by 90 in a couple directions. Once you have all your text placements that you want, go ahead and change the colors to what you want them to be. Now we can start animating. I'm going to make some room for a new transform. This is what we're going to use to move our cube. I'm going to plug it in, change the name to movement. Then I'm going to go to the first frame and I'm going to click the keyframe for all the rotations. We want it all starting at zero and then we want them to change with our movement. Now if you notice, I made one mistake here. If I'm moving stuff around, nothing moves. That's because the camera is moving with everything because I'm rotating the merge. I'm going to have to move the camera after my movement node. So I'm going to put in another merge 3D and put in the camera there. Now everything's working the way it should. So the way I like to approach this is go to the next position and just rotate my cube until it matches and then repeat that for all the other movements. It's gonna take you a little bit to try and get the cube in the right position, right perspective. If we wanna change the perspective of the cube, we can do that by changing the focal length of the camera and the position of the cube. So change the focal length to 10 and change our Z position to 10 as well. Now I'm just gonna go through for the other movements and go ahead and rotate my cube. This will take a little bit of tweaking. As you can see, it doesn't rotate nicely all the time. So you're just gonna to have to mess with it till you get the right look. Once you have all your positions, click on the movement node and go ahead and go to the spline editor. Go ahead and check the boxes if they're not. Click on zoom to fit. The key to this is to make it look like there's a little bit of an impact or force acting on the cube, which means we want a really fast movement at the beginning and then to slow down. So what I like to do first is to grab all my nodes and hit S to smooth them out. And then we're going to grab some handles and then we're going to hold control while we move some of these handles down. This too is going to take you some time. You're not going to get it right the first time and I probably still didn't get it right. Again, use a reference if you have to, but really you're just going to time this to whatever music or beat you're going to have. If you need to, you can always uncheck some of the lines that where they're not visible and you can just work on the ones you want to. That's really helpful at times. 
and really all I'm doing is just moving those keyframe positions around, moving up and down, until I get the right look. After about 10 minutes of working on it, my lines look like this, and it's a pretty good match to the movement. Now there's a spin at the end, but we can always do that with a different transform along with the zoom, so we don't have to mess around with the splines anymore. Last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make the background. Start off with adding a white background, then go ahead and add another background, go ahead and add a rectangle mask to that, uncheck solid, and increase the border width. Plug that in. Go ahead and add in a displace and a fast noise. This is going to give us our look. The main thing we want to change on here is the seethe rate. We want to change that to 0.2 so we have some movement. And then it's just going to be a matter of tweaking the scale and the contrast. And on the displacement, we can also change some of the parameters there, like the strength. Once you get the look you want, you can add in a transform, right click, and modify with a perturb. Go to your modifiers tab, and we're just going to move it into place. And we're going to adjust the speed and strength. Speed is going to be how fast it's moving. Strength is going to be how far it moves away from its initial position. Once you have that working the way you want it to, duplicate all those two more times, go ahead and merge them in, and just change the color and the location of the rectangle. So go ahead and change the color. Then you go to your transform, your modifiers, and just drag these to where you want them. Now the last thing we do is add in a blur, increase that a little bit, and you have your background image. One final thing we can do is add an emotion blur node. You can do this on the merge, but I haven't had much luck with it. If I go ahead and go there and I click on and off the motion blur, you can see it changes slightly, but not nearly as much as the motion blur node. So I usually just go with the motion blur and then just crank it up. And there you go, you got a fancy looking text cube. Thanks for watching, go make one yourself and we'll see you next time. Bye now.